Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. What has happened to the Democratic Party? That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. In a disgraceful exhibition yesterday, one that will go down in history as a blight on American politics, the Senate Minority Leader, Democrat Harry Reid, killed Kate's law, at least for now. The new mandatory minimum sentence this bill would create would have a crippling financial effect. This is yet another attack on the immigrant community. I truly believe that what Harry Reid is doing here is pure evil. I think Bill O'Reilly has it exactly right. I believe Ted Cruz has it exactly right. And it demonstrates why we've got to go to, to regular order uh, in this government. What Lou Dobbs is saying is that one Senator Reid should not have the power to derail legislation. But even though case law will likely come up again for a vote, it seems certain most Democrat senators will not support the measure that's designed to protect all Americans from thugs like the guy who shot and killed Kate Steinle in San Francisco. As you may know, that illegal alien had seven felony convictions, came back six times after being deported. I mean, it's insane. Nevertheless, Democrat senators like crazy left Sherrod Brown in Ohio oppose mandatory five-year prison terms for such individuals. Brown saying, quote, to his constituency, the mandatory minimum sentences established under this bill, Kate's law, would waste taxpayer money by increasing the federal prison population. Yeah, that's right, Senator. Convicted aggravated felons who defy deportation would wind up in prison under Kate's law, instead of running around sanctuary cities like San Francisco selling drugs and shooting young women in the head. Brown's a disgrace. How Ohioans ever elected him is a mystery of the universe. Now, as Talking Points reported yesterday, Americans overwhelmingly support Kate's law. Think about it. Who would oppose the law? Who would oppose this? I can't figure this out. Democrat senators like Bob Casey, Dianne Feinstein, Patrick Leahy, Claire McCaskill, Bill Nelson, these people should openly embrace Kate's law. Instead, they remain silent and will remain so unless pressured by their constituents. On that front, I'm not hopeful. Last week, a guy from the Media Research Center went to a pro-immigration rally in Colorado. Have you heard of Kate's Law? No. Have you heard of Kate Steinle? No. Do you, have you ever heard of Kate's Law? No, I have not. I don't That's like you asking the people here the questions that you're asking. See, we got it. He doesn't like the questions. Okay, well, thank you. Perfect. You see, I knew there was something up you're with that. You're welcome to leave. Uh, well, we're welcome to, of course. We don't have yeah. to. Well, you're not going to interview anybody else. Why not? How can you stop us? Because I just said. And they shut him down. Now, we should point out that both President Obama and Hillary Clinton have also been silent on Kate's law. So we have to assume they oppose it. Again, that's scandalous. It's a very simple concept that would protect all Americans. Mandatory prison terms would give law enforcement another tool to dismantle foreign gangs operating in the USA and would discourage convicted, aggravated felons from coming back here after being deported. But once again, the Democratic Party will not support Kate's law. It is beyond a reasonable doubt the DNC is incredibly radicalized. There don't seem to be any moderate Democrats anymore. Because if you are a moderate Democrat, you're scorned by your peers. And that's why Harry Reid can get away with killing Kate's law, which, of course, would prevent even more killing. My apologies to the family of Kate Steinle. You do not deserve this. And I'm not giving up. We'll get that to the Senate floor again. They need 60 votes, and we'll try to convince some Democrats to support it. That's all I can do. And that's a memo. Now for the top story tonight, reaction. Joining us from Washington, Dan Holler, Vice President at Heritage Action for America. So tell me about Harry Reid. How radical is he really? I mean, Bill, Harry Reid is an extremist. And here's the thing. He will use every single tool at his disposal to try to advance and change the very fabric of this country. He doesn't like the America that you and I like. He has an agenda, and he's willing to push it, even if people don't like it. And he's not afraid of it. He has not had a political repercussion because of it. And the Democrat Party is still standing, and it's outrageous. But I don't understand this. Nevada is not a crazy left state. It's not California. No, it's not. And he, he was held just to about 50 percent back in 2010. There was a lot of thought that that was a very winnable race, that the Republicans could have invested more in that Yeah, they race. had an inexperienced candidate run against Reid. But Reid is so outrageous and blocked so many worthy bills and, and wouldn't work um, with uh, the Republicans. 
when he had control of the Senate as a majority leader. And now he's harpooning everything as a minority leader. Um, his goal is to protect President Obama at all costs, correct? The president doesn't want Kate's law getting into his desk. Right. I mean, it's an amazing thing. If you think about what President Obama has had to do, it's nothing. Harry Reid, whether he was the majority leader or now is minority leader, has blocked everything from getting to President Obama's desk. President Obama has vetoed four bills. It's outrageous. Harry Reid is a gatekeeper. He's running interference for the president, and he's taking all the political grief. Because you're exactly right, Bill. If Barack Obama wanted this law passed, if he wanted to stand on the side of families across this country against violence from illegal immigrants, this would be signed into law and Harry Reid would stop blocking it. Okay, it's absolutely true. Now, Reid, um, there have been rumors a, a lot in Nevada that he doesn't even own a home there. Uh, he lives in a hotel. Um, and then there was a land deal in 2004, it's according to the National Review, where he made $700,000 off some shady thing. You know anything about that? Yeah, I mean, it is amazing. You look through Harry Reid's almost three decades in the Senate and in Congress, what you find is a long history of land deals. So there's this one in 2004 that you're talking about that profited $700,000. There's these earmarks that went to a bridge to build property, right next, a bridge across property, right where he owned it to increase property value. There's dealings with blocking casinos against other casinos that were from donors of his. I mean, this is sort of the very cronyism and corruption that everybody expects out of Washington. Harry Reid personifies it, and there's no backlash. Now, he's made a lot of money since he's been in the Senate. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty impressive that you go into public service, and over the course of three decades, you quadruple your net worth. Um, it, it's something that I think a lot of folks would like to have seen happen for them since 1987. All right. Now, uh, last question. Reid is, uh, he just doesn't have any kind, uh, you can't reason with the man. I mean, it's not like I could get him on the show. I could talk about Kate's Law, how this is necessary to stop the madness. If you're deported, you're an aggravated felon, you're not going to put him in jail in a mandatory way. I mean, uh, why is he so unreasonable? I mean, he, he's trying to reshape the way things work. I mean, it's why he got rid of the judicial filibuster, so he could stack the federal courts with a bunch of left-wing Obama judges. He is looking at this, and how do I, in my short time in Washington, reshape what's going on? I don't care what Bill O'Reilly says. I don't care what the American people say. I want to leave my imprint on this country, and I want to change it in a dramatic fashion. That's what he's doing, and we need to make sure the Democrat Party stops following his lead. All right. Well, I don't know if you're ever going to make sure of that, because they're certainly scared. If there's any moderate Democrats, please stand up. Mr. Holler, thank you. And once again, if you would like to call the offices of your Democratic senators, that would be a good thing. We have posted Senator Reid's office number and email on BillOReilly.com.